bed leveling. We all do it. Some of us do it hard. Some of us do it fast. And some of us, well, either way, no matter how you do it, we all have to do it. Big Tree Tech sent me over this Eddy USB that I installed on my Voron to show off for you guys. So big thank you to them. This cool bit of tech helps you level your bed in a way that is relatively new, which as the name suggests, is with eddy currents. Now I'm an electrical engineer and we could delve into the physics of exactly how this thing works, but I don't wanna to go too in depth for this video. The gist of it is that eddy is shooting off some magnetic fields and as it moves across your bed, it induces or creates currents in that conductor, and those currents then create their own magnetic fields that Eddy is able to sense. Now this might sound similar to the inductive probes that we've used in the past, but inductive probes are more similar to a limit switch. They're either not detecting something or they're detecting something, so it's either on or off. Whereas Eddy is able to do a live readout of the currents or the magnetic fields it's detecting from those currents at all times. So you're able to know precisely where it is relative to the conductor that it's sensing. Now I know it's been a while since my last video and that's mostly because I was waiting for some updates to the instructions and the macros and the clipper that Big Tree Tech has you install for Eddy. Now that's a good thing because Big Tree Tech is updating it, which is nice. And it's quite a bit easier to set up now than it was when I first got it. But I didn't want to release a video where I show this thing kind of half-baked or not working just to have to release another video correcting some things in a week or two. So first, I want to show you where I'm at with this thing. Here, my 2.4 is laying down a first layer and I'm getting great results. I can repeatedly do this and I don't really need to worry about my first layer anymore, which means this thing is definitely working and does what it claims to do. As it's finishing up, I'll give you a little better look, but this is a very good first layer. It's very smooth, and I'm really happy with this. So while this finishes up behind me, I wanna introduce the next section, which is how I got here. So I recorded a lot of the footage of the install and the initial setup a couple weeks ago, but some things have changed since then. So if you see some jumps in the timeline where maybe I'm wearing a different shirt or whatever, it's because some of the stuff that I originally recorded is still valid, but I'll have to do some new information and some cuts where it's appropriate. So that's why the next section might seem a little disjointed, but I'll cover how I installed it and how you actually do the software setup. I went ahead and took the panels off so that way I have ease of access for this install. And the first thing we need to do, since both of my Vorons have tap installed, is to uninstall it. So I'll do that off camera and then I'll come back to you guys when I'm ready to install the traditional X carriage and get everything wired up for Eddy. Now that we are here with the traditional X carriage installed, I went ahead and routed the USB cable for Eddy up through my drag chain and wired it in. And now before we install Eddy onto the actual carriage, I'm going to plug it in and do the firmware side of things. So let's jump into that. The first thing we need to do, which is still correct as of today, July 15th, is switch to BTT's version of Clipper. So CD your Clipper directory, add BTT's version, it already exists for me, fetch it, and check it out. And as you can see, this current version says allows calibration of Eddie Pro without Home Z access. So they're making updates and that's what this current version allows you to do. But that's the first thing you need to do. Then you would flash the actual Clipper firmware onto Eddie. So what we're going to do is CD our Clipper directory, and then we're gonna make menu config. Here, I'm just following the guide from Big Tree Tech themselves. So I'll put that on screen. We're going to enable extra low level configuration options. It's gonna be an RP2040. There is no bootloader. W25Q080 is the flash chip. Communication interface is USB. And this is what it should look like. So we're going to press Q and Y to save it. Then we're gonna make clean. And we're gonna hit make. Now while the firmware is doing its thing, there's a button on the top of this that you can hit with like some tweezers or something. In the instructions, they tell you to like take it apart, or at least it shows it as an exploded view, but you really don't have to do that. You can just kind of hit the button like this, but you have to hit the button as you plug it in. So that kind of takes two hands. So I'm gonna to try to do that now and let's see what happens.
I realized you probably couldn't see what I was doing, but I just set it down, held the boot button in with these tweezers and then plugged it in. If we type LSUSB, we should see our device and we do. Raspberry Pi RP2 boot. So that's what we wanna see. Make sure you are still in your clipper directory and then use this command, making sure that this aligns with the serial ID that we see here, and it does. And then we'll hit enter, and there we go, we flash the device. Then we can check to make sure we see it with this, and we do, we get our serial, and then we can use this in our printer config. Now that we have the firmware on it and we don't need to access that boot button anymore, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble everything together so that way we can continue on with getting this thing working. I'm gonna do that off camera and I'll meet you guys again when it's fully assembled. It does come with two sets of screws to install Eddy and I had to use the longer set. Your mileage may vary, I'm not sure why there was two. And then as far as where it should be located because you can move this up and down, I just tucked it all the way up and then compared it with my hot end and it's about one to two millimeters above the nozzle which is what they say it should be. So I think that works, but just double check it yourself. I wouldn't call it the most elegant setup ever, but since I already had CAN bus, there wasn't really any way to route this into the PG7 cable gland. These two cables don't fit. So I just kind of zip tied them together. And then same thing on this side. So I just kind of shoved the cable in and it seems to work and then zip tied them up here and then shoved everything back in the sleeving. So hopefully this should work. I tested my end stops, they do work. I'm gonna tighten my belts and then I'm gonna get on to actually configuring Eddy. The setup process is what has changed the most since I started filming this. Now they have three setups for you if you wanna use a dedicated end stop, you wanna use Eddy as your end stop, or you wanna use Eddy as your end stop and use this beta Z offset feature. So there was originally a bug where your Z offset was not saving. Turns out that's not a bug, but a feature, because with Eddy, you don't actually need a Z offset. With Eddy, you're actually telling your printer exactly where the nozzle hits the bed, which means your printer actually knows where Z equals zero is. With typical probes, where your probe detects and stops, that becomes Z equals zero. So now you need to tell your printer an offset to actually get the nozzle down to Z equals zero for the bed. I would recommend using Eddy as your Z end stop and using that beta Z offset feature uh, right from the get-go so that way you have a little bit more granular control of exactly how your first layer goes down. So go ahead and copy everything from their sample config into yours. Change everything that needs to be changed, including the pins, setting Eddy as your Z end stop. And at this point, you can also change how you want your bed mesh to be configured. I use a 20 by 20 bed mesh. And remember, if you're using K-Amp, Clipper Adaptive Meshing, go ahead and turn that off. Then you calibrate the drive current by setting the nozzle about 20 millimeters away from the bed and running a command. Then you run one single command to find Z equals zero on your printer by running the command, putting a piece of paper down on your bed, and baby stepping it down until it contacts the piece of paper. Finally, you run one command to calibrate Eddy over temperature change. I recommend just setting this to 60 Celsius. Eddy hits 60 Celsius easily in my Voron and then you would baby step it down to hit the piece of paper over four degrees C increments, then it's calibrated for temperature. That's pretty much it, and now Eddy is your Z end stop, which you'll use during homing, you'll use it for quad gantry leveling if you have a 2.4, and obviously, you use it for your bed mesh. If you need to adjust your Z offset with that beta feature, you have to run the command at least once where you home all your axes, then in your interface, you set Z equal to zero. So just tell Z to move to zero, which will essentially slam your nozzle into your bed. But if you put a piece of paper there and you ran the previous command and did it accurately, it should be right where your nozzle touches the bed. From there, you can baby step it down to get a little bit more squish. I recommend just running one baby step and then saving it from there, because what that will do is it will add a variable into the variable file that you can access on your printer. And if you want to step your first layer down or up, you can just change that variable in the actual configuration file and you don't have to do that process again. And there you go. Eddy is pretty easy to set up and it's not that much different from configuring any other probe that you've used in the past. All right, so now to the burning question. Should you buy Eddy? 
First, I wanna take a step back. A proper bed mesh should be where you heat up your bed from cold to hot and let it soak and settle for about 30 minutes. Then you can run a dense bed mesh, which you can then load at the beginning of every print and you only have to mesh once, provided that you heat your bed up the same way you did when you ran the initial dense mesh. So if you heat your bed up for 30 minutes and then mesh, at the beginning of every print, if you heat up for 30 minutes and then load your saved mesh, you never have to run a mesh again. There's no reason you need to mesh at the beginning of every print. But I can hear you saying already, it's my money and I want it now. So if you want it to be faster, you can totally just run a mesh at the beginning of every print, provided you have a good probe and a dense mesh and things should be okay. Most of the printers you buy off the shelf do it this way and they operate just fine. So if you want to continue to run your bed mesh at the beginning of every print, then we can start to see more benefits for Eddy. So what are those benefits for Eddy? Well, it is much faster. A seven by seven bed mesh on my smaller 250 Voron took almost five minutes to do with tap. On Eddy, a 20 by 20 bed mesh took less than 20 seconds to run on my 300. So 20 seconds versus five minutes. This adds up if you want to mesh at the beginning of every single print and you got a much denser mesh as well, which should lead to a better first layer. It is also a non-contact method of probing, unlike TAP, which a lot of people are running on their Vorons now, or other load force sensors, which a lot of printers are running. You will still have to have the nozzle make contact with your bed, with the piece of paper, but a lot of probes have you do that anyway, so I see that as a non-issue. TAP actually slams the nozzle into your bed multiple times across the whole bed. One drawback to Eddy is that it won't work on all build plates or beds, depending on the material that it's made out of or the type of magnets that are used. So back to the original question, should you buy it? I think that's something you have to answer for yourself. If you're gonna to continue to run a mesh at the beginning of every print and you want a fast, dense mesh, then Eddy might be something for you to consider. If you already have a printer that's working and your first layer is really good, I don't know if it's something that you should consider, but it's worth a shot. But if you're building a new printer and you want to decide on what you're gonna use to level your bed, I think it is an attractive option. And I don't know if I would have changed from TAP to Eddy myself if Big Tree Tech hadn't sent it to me. But if I was going to build a new Voron tomorrow, I would probably use Eddy for my build. So I'm going to leave it on this printer and continue to use it and continue to get these great first layers. If you guys already have Eddy or you were thinking about buying it, leave a comment down below and let me know how it's going for you. If you learned anything, leave a like. And regardless of what probe you're using on your printer, if you subscribe, your prints will always come out buttery smooth. I'll see you guys in the next one.